Hey girls, Mrs. Blackburn here today. We are on day four where we will begin editing our personal narrative. Let's look at the learning goal. Students will learn what it means to edit a draft of writing, your success criteria. Students will successfully edit their personal narratives by correcting your spelling, punctuation, and other conventions in your writing. So. Here's what we're going to do next. We are going to take a peek at a video again, and this video should look familiar because it is the editing video that we looked at earlier in the year, it's been several weeks, so we will review what it means to edit a personal narrative. A personal narrative is a true story about your life. You write about something that has happened to you. Editing is making our writing look better. We fix all of the mistakes we may have made in our first drafts. We do this to make sure other people can read and understand our stories. That way, we can publish and share our hard work with others. When we edit, we check our spelling, our punctuation, and our capitalization. To edit our spelling, we make sure we spelled sight words correctly, that we used all of the word parts we know, and that we stretched out all of the sounds and words as best as we could. Your spelling doesn't have to be perfect. You just need to use what you already know, fix any silly mistakes you made, and try your best. Here is a sentence from my story about when I got a new dog. It says, first, my sweet mom came to my room to talk to me. Do you see a sight word that I spelled incorrectly? Hmm, my is a sight word, it's spelled right. Two is a sight word, it's correct. How about the word me? Is it spelled right? Oh yeah, me is just M-E, much better. Here's my next sentence. She told me since I had gotten good grades at school, I could get a dog. Do you see any places where I didn't use word parts correctly? Oh, now I remember learning that OO says uh or oo. So good is probably spelled G-O-O-D. And school is probably spelled with an OO too. That looks right. Here is my next sentence. It says, I was so excited I jumped super high up in the air. Do you see a word that I could stretch out even more? Hmm. How about excited? I wrote some of the sounds I heard, but I think I could stretch it out more. X I T did. That's a better guess. Maybe I can look in a dictionary later if I want to see if I'm right. Next, we are going to edit punctuation. Punctuation marks are symbols that go at the ends of sentences, like periods, question marks, and exclamation points. When I edit my punctuation, I have to make sure that I have punctuation marks in all of the right places. I also need to make sure that I use the correct kind of punctuation. Here is my next sentence. It says, Then we got in the car to drive to the store. I couldn't wait. Do you see anywhere I put a punctuation mark in the wrong place? Hmm. I put one at the end of the first line, but I guess I don't need one there. That sentence isn't over yet. It continues on to the next line. Do you see a place where I forgot to put a punctuation mark? Oh, yeah, my last sentence needs one. I'm going to put an exclamation point since I was really, really excited. My next page says, when we pulled up, I saw that the store had a lot of dogs that needed to be adopted. Do you think this sentence needs a question mark? No, that's not a question. It's a statement. So I'll change it to a period. Much better. 
last, we are going to edit our capitalization. We will check to make sure we always capitalize the word I and the first letter of the first word of every sentence and specific names of people, places, or things. All of the other letters will almost always be lowercase. This page says, when we got to the store, I looked at all of the dogs. They were all so cute. Do you see a place where I made a mistake? Oh yeah, the word I should always be capitalized. My next sentence says, all of the sudden one came up and licked my foot. He was white and fluffy and so adorable. What mistake did I make this time? Oh, right, I need to use a capital letter for the first word of every sentence. But all of my other letters will stay lowercase. My last sentence says, I decided he was the dog for me. Do you see a mistake I made? Hmm, I probably shouldn't have capitalized the word dog. Dog isn't his name. I would only use an uppercase letter if I wrote his real name, like I decided Fluffy was the dog for me. That's it. Thanks for helping me edit my personal narrative. Check out the final episode. All right, boys and girls, so that's the end of editing. It had some great reminders, especially for the capital, to capitalize the word I when it's in isolation, and some end marks and some other things. Really great reminders on that editing. Don't forget, you can always use a dictionary to help you with your spelling, and look that up, uh, look the spelling up online as well. So, let's go back to our example that we've been looking at. Here is Houston Blues Blooms by Evan W. Now, if you remember, we had the revising that we looked at yesterday, and that is in green. So now we look at the red. That The red part would be the editing. So that's what we will be looking at today. I live in Houston, Texas. So here he used his carrot mark to insert the comma. The comma goes between Houston and Texas because that's a city and a state. And then we're going to jump down here. I felt the same way about it. That night my dad told me the city council was getting ideas for what to do with the lot. Whenever you have three lines put underneath a letter, that means that it should be capitalized. So why are, if we have city in isolation just by itself, it would not be capitalized, but we will be capitalizing city and council because it's the name. It is the name of the council, city council. That's why both of those are capitalized there. Now here we're going to jump down to the dialogue. What made you think of that? My mom asked. Well, because this is a sentence within the quotation marks, it is the dialogue. We do put a question mark there because it's within the quotation marks. So that should be there. And moving on down here, he did forget his quotation marks here. So he's putting those there. Remember those go on the outside of the end mark plus green spaces help the environment period and then the quotation marks. Then if we move on down, he sees that he has city council again that he needs to capitalize because it's the name. Finally is a transition. So whenever you have a transition word, you always have a comma after that. And so you can see that he's fixed his punctuation as he goes through. So I hope you can see the difference between revising and editing. Editing, editing has to do more with the spelling, capitalization, and the punctuation. You're focusing more on that. The reason we do that in two different days is because you're looking at it through a different lens. One day you are focusing on word choice and you are on sentence fluency, those two parts of, of the six traits, because they are very different. 
and it gets overwhelming if you're looking at all the different things on if you're looking at editing and revising on the same days or all at once it's very overwhelming so if we can narrow those down and separate them and look at just the two revising on one day or at one time and then editing on another then we can find those errors and make the changes when we look at them all at once it's it's too overwhelming that's why we separate them and if you think that you can do that just in one sitting and do it very quickly, then you're probably doing something wrong because writers really do spend a lot of time in this revising and editing stage. There's lots of things that can be changed, lots of word choice that we can make better and lots of things that we can do to improve our writing. So if you're thinking that you can do the revising and editing stage in a very quick um, one sitting, you're probably doing something incorrectly. All right. So to wrap up this lesson, let's take a look at our success criteria. You will know that you are successful because you can edit your personal narratives, you have corrected your spelling, your punctuation, and other conventions in your writing. So you will have a puzzle piece to complete in Schoology. If you have any questions, please reach out to your teachers.